real, I think, blast of awe and wonder. You get to see familiar objects such as the moon, uh, but in really crisp detail or with uh, you know extreme close-ups, or you get to see distant galaxies that you cannot see with the naked eye. You have to use astronomical instrumentation. So I think it really, in a strange sort of sense, brings home the universe. Astronomy Photographer of the Year is the world's best astrophotography competition. We've got astrophotographers that are covering everything and they cover deep, distant space. Uh, we've got beautiful uh, nebula, colourful, um, uh, intricate detail there. Landscapes where, they, where they, the night sky is an important part of the landscape. And we have things like the Annie Mondo Prize for Image Innovation, which is about using open source data uh, and, and processing it to show people something new with existing data. As an astronomer, I, what's really cool is uh, we're, we're seeing entries where people are really uh, making discoveries or, or, or showing us uh, imagery which hasn't actually been shown to people before, uh, especially with, I would say, things like uh, nebula images, for example. There's, there's been quite a lot of success uh, there of uh, showing things that we haven't really uh, seen before. There's also, I think, actually a lot of them are sort of demonstrations of things we know about, but it's about capturing a particular thing where you're trying to provide examples of the mechanics of the solar system. I think that's also pretty important, bringing that to people. We have beautiful solar imagery every year, and this year was no exception. The reason it's very difficult is because you, you've got an excess of light, which is, which is quite unusual uh, compared to most astrophotography. So you, you've got to be really in control. Uh, but then also during an eclipse, you get that one chance. And so the, the timing, the preparation, the framing of the image, collecting the data, processing it to produce something beautiful and timely and, and interesting, uh, I, I think is, is, is just amazing. I'm always, always blown away by that. One of the solar images that really stood out was Blue Turns to Red by Anders Papp from Hungary. He's taken nanoband uh, imagery by looking at very specific frequencies. You can actually see the shift of material that is moving towards you and away from you. And so color coding it blue and red actually produces this sort of 3D effect. You can actually see the 3D nature of the sun and, and also the material that's moving off the surface of the sun towards us or falling back. I don't think we've ever seen anything like it in the competition and I, I thought it was absolutely amazing. Another image that I thought was really amazing uh, was Queenstown Aurora by Lannan Ray, New Zealand. Uh, so this is the Aurora Australis, uh, uh, the, the, the southern light. We get relatively few Aurora Australis. This image, I mean, it is just amazing, um, regardless of its rarity, because it's, it, it's got these beautiful pink hues. It's got a beautiful balanced sort of landscape. Like it's a, it's a great image and it's of something kind of rarely seen. One of the things, I, I love it as a, as a category, the Animonde Prize for Image Innovation. We had two sort of goals. Uh, one was to provide uh, a route into the competition for people who might not have uh, telescopes or sophisticated cameras or anything like that themselves. We wanted to be able to, to allow them to access open source data. But the other part of it was that lots of this data, and there's vast amounts of open source data that's available to anybody, um, hasn't been shown off in all the ways that it can be shown off. There's lots of ways to present that in different sort of beautiful ways uh, that are not the primary consideration of the research group, for example. This year we had an amazing image of the Earth uh, using satellite uh, data. So this is open source data, this is available to everybody, uh, and it gets processed in lots of different ways and it gets used for lots of different things, weather monitoring and, uh, and, and keeping the Earth under observation essentially, but to present it as something that is weird, as if you're looking at an alien world, um, but it is our Earth, it, I think it's really intriguing. Not only is it beautiful, but, but then it actually I think makes you read more about what's going on and, and really uh, brings home uh, what, what you're being shown and, and how important it is to collect this data. You definitely see people that have put a lot of time, a lot of effort, and they've chosen something particular. But to start off with, there's loads of things that um, you know a, a snapshot would do because it, it, it's about something that's transitory. Or uh, if you don't have a camera, uh, uh, open source data, and you can process this stuff yourself. So we always want to make sure that there's, there's, there's ways into it. You're not gonna produce this on your first go. No, absolutely nobody here uh, it did. Uh, but we hope when people come and see the exhibition is, is that they will be inspired. Um, whether that makes them look at the universe itself a, a, in a different way, maybe they get into things in a, a scientific and academic way, or, you know, and this is certainly something we hope for, maybe they're inspired to join the competition themselves and show, show us what they've got.